Hello, my friends. Batman here in the man cave. <laughs> I uh, have a rather probably short program for you today. Just got one short video. Uh, but I do have three viewer emails to read to you. I, I get, as I've said, just dozens and dozens of emails. And almost on a daily basis, really. Um... And uh, I don't typically read them, but these three, I thought, it just kind of came in all at once. It, and uh, I thought they're kind of too good to pass up, so I'm going to go ahead and read these three to you. Uh, even with my limited reading skills. Uh, but first I thought, you know, we're still in the Easter season. I thought I'd do a song that I wrote that... I probably did this at least once on the channel. I probably did, but I don't remember when I did or if I did. So, here goes. <laughs> now, the story behind this song, and, you know, p people, I imagine, think, he's making this stuff up for dramatic purposes, <laughs> but it's true. I'm not making this up at all. I woke up one morning. This was when I was still sleeping in a bed rather than sleeping in my chair sitting up. Um, this was back around 2001, somewhere in there, because around 2003, somewhere in there, I had to quit sleeping in a bed. I don't really know the date I wrote this, but I woke up, uh, early in the morning and I ran, well, I didn't run, but I, I went straight to the computer and, and wrote this down. And I already had all the words and everything in my head and I didn't have to, you know, think of anything, I just wrote it down. So that's exactly how it happened. Last night I dreamed I was in heaven And there upon the throne I saw God's Son God said unto His Son Jesus, the time has come for you to return unto the world and he's coming again we pray that he would he's coming again be ready we all know we should he's coming again we all need him so He's coming again to save all our souls. The angels were singing from on high, and I could see the love in Jesus' eyes. Gabriel blew his horn. As I watch the crown of thorns descend through the clouds upon his head, and he's coming again, we pray that he would. He's coming again, be ready, we all know we should. He's coming again. We all need him so he's coming again to save all our souls he's coming again there you have it <clears throat> I'm <clears throat> I'm fairly sure that I've told you that I also wrote a gospel song in rush hour traffic at 70 miles an hour one time too. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow I'll do that one for you. Uh, I don't, I, I may have done it also on the channel. I, I, again, I don't remember. I, anyway, let's see. Uh, I did joined the chat a little while this morning before we got started, which is kind of unusual for me because I don't usually have time. And uh, But anyway, I gave it a shot this morning, and we did chat a few times. Let's see, Dottie was, looks like, number one this morning, and Brian Byler and Carolyn Fike. And uh, 
Let's see. It looks like Hugh, Hugh O'Connor says, just confused myself. Our clocks changed at the uh, weekend, so wondered why nothing was being posted an hour earlier. <laughs> that sounds like my kind of problem. Uh, Dottie Hildebrandt. Hello, Jerry. Praying for your hands each day. Thank you, Dottie. Hope you're doing better. I saw you said you had uh, constant headaches or daily headaches. And uh, my daughter suffered from migraines. Uh, I don't remember exactly what helped her, but she's she's in, much improved. Uh, I can't remember what it was that helped her. But I know I used to suffer from headaches growing up as a as a kid I had them all the time and it turns out that mine I think were mostly sinus related uh, due to allergies and uh, especially now that I stay on that allergy medicine I don't have as many headaches as I used to have for sure but I used to have them a lot um Let's see. Clyde Price says, Good morning, Jerry. Have a good day. Was wondering if you are in the path of the solar eclipse next Monday. We are in the path here in Newfoundland, uh, where I live. Well, um, I thought we were based on some of the comments that I had received early on, but apparently it's going to go just a little off of us. I mean, we'll see mostly a, sol a full solar eclipse from here, but it, I think there'll be a little bit of sun peeking out on one corner or something uh, where we're at here, but we're pretty close. We're not right in the path. Um, I don't know if we'll drive to go see it or not. I haven't made up my mind, but uh, wouldn't mind driving a little ways and in, in where we could get a little bit closer. We wouldn't have to drive too far. We might have to drive 30, 40 miles. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> let's see. There's a lot of other comments there. Gary Hayes, uh, Gary, West Virginia. Jerry, the shell on the vlog yesterday could, uh, uh, could be that of a Gatling gun. Well, I never, that would never have crossed my mind. Uh, cause I, I just would have assumed, and I don't know, cause I don't know nothing about this, uh, that a Gatling gun shell would have been much bigger. Cause this shell was pretty small. It's only it's just a little bigger than a 22 shell. But the, being that it's a 30 caliber, you know, maybe, maybe, I, I don't know. What's really weird about it, like I said, the weirdest thing to me about it, and I'm not even 100% sure it's a shell. I mean, I'm not 100% sure. It just looks like it's made like a shell. It's got the brass on the back. It's got the bullet on the end. That typically is a shell. But what's weird about it is that it's got like riflings down that brass. It looks like it's been shot out of a gun. The whole thing. I don't know. Maybe maybe that's the way they made some special bullet. Maybe it's not a shell at all. Maybe that's the whole bullet and I just found the whole bullet. I don't know. Yeah, I've never seen anything made like this before. Like I said, when it comes to bullets and guns and stuff, I mean, I'm not an expert, but I've seen an awful lot. Um, just didn't think you could throw something at me that I'd just never, ever seen before. But I've never seen this. And I really don't know what it could be. Heck, for all I know, it might be something totally unrelated. It might not even be a gun-related item at all. <laughs> but but it sure looks like it, especially with that crimp around it to hold the, the lead bullet in. I mean, it looks like a bullet. But I've never seen a bullet made like this. So I, I, I'm really puzzled about it. Someone sent me something yesterday that I haven't really had time to look at in an email. They sent it to me. And... Um, uh, I forget the, what they called it, a Thur, a Thur or something like that, T-H-E-U-R or something like that, bullet. And it looks similar, it does look similar, but it doesn't look exactly the same, so I don't know. I'm going to do some more investigation when I have time, I just don't have time right now. Um, anyway, it, it's very interesting to me. Then that's about where I got involved in the chats there, and uh, let's see, moving on down, let's see. Um, just as a recap, while I'm scrolling through this, all three instruments did sell. All three of them are now boxed up. That's what I did yesterday. Uh, spent most of the day yesterday boxing those three instruments up because it involved going to town to get the boxes. First of all, I went and got instrument boxes from the, uh, music store in town and, uh, bought uh, well, I bought two boxes and then I had a box that kind of worked for the mandolin and I just cut it down and 
fit the mandolin into it. Uh, anyway, moving on down, let's see here. After I quit chatting, Dottie says, I don't listen to any other blogs in the morning, but this one here is a good one. Well, thank you. Um, and she says, I'm so glad I found it. Uh, David Tharp, hi, Jerry, I sent you an email. Uh, yeah, it, that, that was, is that the one about the bullet? I, 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 I saved it. I put it in my personal file there to go back to it later and look at it. But I, I didn't spend a lot of time on it yesterday. I was pretty busy yesterday. Um, and I'll be looking at emails again today, too. So if it's something else, David, I'll see it then. Uh, well, it scrolled on me there. Where did it go? Bill says, I've heard that song before. Well, I do sing it at jams quite often, actually. I don't always sing it on the channel. I don't know if I've sang it on the channel or not, but you could have heard it at one of the jams, Bill, because I do, I do it quite often at jams. Dottie Hildebrandt, I love this song, Jerry. You should uh, really record many of your songs. I know you said that weren't much, but you are wrong. Well, thank you. I That song there, I'm pretty happy with. I, I also like my song that I wrote in the rush hour traffic that I'll do for you tomorrow. Um, let's see. It, it's Well, that one was called He's Coming Again, the one I just sang. The one that I wrote in the rush hour traffic is called uh, Don't Leave Earth Without Him. <laughs> I do it at jams occasionally, too. Yeah, uh, Mike Jones says, don't forget, we're all uh, children of God. Yeah, that's a very good song, Jerry. Gary Hayden says, love the song, Daniel Lips. Um, uh, C90 guy says, it's a soft-nosed bullet that's been fired. Well, I don't know what that means exactly. Um, I've never seen a brass case on a bullet i mean that's it's not exactly what i mean i you know like modern bullets are that way they're they're the whole lead bullet is encased in in brass but this one looks like a 22 shell without the rim this is what it looks like it looks like a 22 shell if you just took the rim off of it and it looks like it's got riflings down the brass part of the shell I don't know how to explain that. What I was wondering is, did they have some sort of an impact explo explosive bullet? In other words, they fire the whole bullet out of some other bullet, I guess, and the whole bullet's flying through the air, and then when it impacts, it explodes. I wondered if they had that, because that's what it looks like it is. I mean, that's what it looks like it is. I just don't know if they had something like that during the Civil War. Yeah, uh, Chuck says the standard Gatling gun was a 4570. See, that's more like what I would have expected. I, I really thought Gatling guns were giant bullets, you know, bang, bang, bang type bullets, you know. So I wouldn't have expected anything that small. Uh, Daniel Reddington, the Taylor's beautiful. I would have bid on it if, if it didn't pick up a 210 series if I didn't pick up a 210 series recently. Yeah, uh, yeah, that that Taylor was really a nice, uh, uh, you know, classical style guitar. Very, very nice. And like I said, it's like brand new. I mean, it looks like he never played it. <laughs> I mean, it really does look like brand new. DE, Jerry, I would recommend driving somewhere to take in the Eclipse. It's a special one. It's been... Uh, We'll have about four minutes of totality. The sun is a solar maximum. The corona may be interesting. Yeah. Well, we probably will. Now, uh, Trinian, you know, he's 10 years old. I think he was three, the last one that came through. Uh, and it came through. We It just so happened I was on a trip that day to go buy more instrument wood up in Fulton. And the... Uh, total solar eclipse passed right through Columbia area. And it was a total solar eclipse also. And uh, anyway, uh, Trinian was only like three, but he remembers it. I mean, that boy is something else. I, I've told you stories about Trinian. That boy's got a, he's got a different kind of brain than I got. 
you know, he was eight months old and he was whistling. Uh, when he was two years old, he came home from school and he, I never will forget this question that he asked. He says, mom, two years old now, keep in mind, just two years old. He says, mom, and he talked like an adult then. He says, uh, do you know, um, do you know who, uh, Donald Trump is? I can't think of names. You know me and names. He said, and she goes, well, yeah, honey, I know who Donald Trump is. <laughs> she goes, he says, well, you know something? A lot of people don't like him. <laughs> he got that from school. You know, he came home with that. And so, you know, at two years old. But those are the kinds of things that he had on his mind, you know, when he was a little kid like that. I, he's He's got a little different brain than I got. Uh, is, I'm hoping the boy's going to solve world hunger or fix cancer or something. He's really a smart young boy. He's straight A's, of course, and and he's the kindest hearted kid you'll ever meet in your life. I mean, he always volunteers at his school to um, help the, um, um, you know, the, the disabled children and stuff that the teachers will ask, would someone help so-and-so go to, you know, the restroom or go to find the office or whatever. And he always volunteers to help. And he gets notes sent home all the time from his teachers about how nice he is, you know, that type of thing. So just a good kid. But anyway, like I said, he remembered that solar eclipse and, you know, from that young age, I'm pretty good at remembering stuff from when I was really little too, but I don't know. I was probably... Well, now I think about it, that's probably three. <laughs> I can remember one one particular house we lived in, and I always wondered why there was this round hole through the floor in the hallway. <laughs> I still remember that. Weird. Um. Anyway, moving on down. Gary Hayes, Gary, uh, West Virginia, record your song. Dottie and I will tell you if you sing a bad one right. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Gary. Yeah, I, that'll be some more of the songs that I record uh, whenever I figure out how to get this recording stuff going. And like I said, it's, that's not even a priority, unfortunately. I wish it was, but I just, I, there's so much. There's just so much. Can I start cloning myself yet? Walt Willard, on the water wheel, can you build a small pond level with the road, between the road and the block wall, run the trough out of the pond? Eh, not really, not really, not really. There's just no room, number one, and number two, the, the, the big pipe that's in there is 14 inches, and it's it's eight or so inches below the road, and then it's only less than a foot behind the rock wall. So there's really no room, and it's too low anyway already. <clears throat> Chip Wood, have you had any time to mushroom hunt? My wife and I stop on our way home for 30 minutes and found a dozen nice ones. Well, doggone it. I went out yesterday and to my... I think I went to three, maybe four spots that I typically find them, and I didn't find any yesterday. Now, our, one of Sue's friends, um, Denise, uh, she lives down by Fort Leonard Wood, a little ways from here, and she's already found four, she said. So, I don't know. Last night, we had major storms come through. Uh, I know they were major storms because they woke me up, and... Uh, uh, you can tell it washed the driveway out quite a bit today and, and, you know, I don't see any trees down or anything, but, uh, it was some pretty major storm, a lot of rain. So that could make the mushrooms pop. So I'm planning to go out, uh, probably not today cause it's really wet and nasty out there today, but I'll probably go out tomorrow and that should make them pop. I think, <clears throat> uh, Bill Webb says, look at the Na Nagin or Nagent uh, 7.62 cartridge. I think you'll see a similarity. Okay, I'll try to remember that. Uh, Roger Daigle Jr. Quigley down under 45 caliber 110 grain metal cartridge with 540 grain paper patch bullet. Yeah, that's a pretty big bullet there. It's uh, quite a bit bigger than what we're talking about. Jelvis Skidmark's band, uh, 
Signed in five minutes late, so played two times normal speed to catch up. Your song was awesome at that speed as well. <laughs> Thank you. Tell us about Sue's mom and the piano, okay? Um, <clears throat> Sue comes from a non-musical family, with the exception of her mother. And I, when I say non-musical, I mean like, I don't even think they like music at all. And, and I mean, really, I don't think they like it, is, is the bottom line. And Sue, like I told you, Sue just doesn't really care much about what I do with music. I mean, she doesn't hate it, I don't think. <laughs> she might. <laughs> but, the, you know, they, don't, they just don't get into music. Now, her mother was actually a pretty darn good piano player. You know, the old style, the up and down, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but the upright pianos and the up and down kind of playing, you know, it, it um, you know, it, it was the old style kind of music, like you'd hear in an old Western or something, you know, um, really pretty good, if you ask me, the way she played it. I mean, I thought she was pretty good at it. And the moment... <laughs> <laughs> the moment she would sit down to play the piano, because I would actually encourage her to play it, because I liked it. And uh, the moment she'd sit down to play it, everybody in the house, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, you'll think, oh, he's saying this, it isn't really true. But it is true. They would get in their cars and leave. <laughs> they'd leave the house. They didn't just go into the room and shut the door. They'd leave the house. I saw them do it more than once. It's crazy. It's it, I've never seen anything like it. They just, they just don't like music, you know. And uh, they'd get in their cars and leave. And his, his <laughs> but I thought she was pretty darn good at playing, really. I did. I, I enjoyed her, uh, you know, piano playing. And Sue can play a little bit that on the piano. She can. She can play a little bit. I, I don't think she can play more than four or five songs or maybe even that many. I'm not sure. But... Uh, I always did think that was pretty funny, though, the way they, they, they didn't just go in their room and shut the door. They would leave the house. It's crazy. Um, moving down here, let's see if I can find where it was. Um, okay, Charles Sokowitz, good day to all from Florida. Well, I guess that's all of them. Yep. That's where we're caught up to. But let me uh, let me show you the... Uh, so I kind of did it backwards today. I went through the comments first. <laughs> let me show you the K video here, and then we'll get into reading these letters. Well, here's what the uh, cave looked like after I dug it out some more. Let me walk up here. It's going to be shaky cam because I, it's very steep. Yeah, see, I think it's possible that it could go back down in there, but it's really filled up with junk. So it's hard to say. I'd bet this cave goes back in there somewhere if you could just dig it out. Hard to say. So here's what it looks like from standing in the cave entrance, looking down at the creek. You know, thousands of years ago, this may have looked way different. It's possible the Native Americans may have used this at one time. But it's also possible that I discovered it. Who knows where it might go. I wish I could find a way to get in there and dig it out better. But I don't feel like digging it with this kind of a rock roof. It's kind of shaly, as you can see. Most of it's caved in already. I mostly imagine the rest of it's fairly solid. Though you can see cracks in some of those rocks there. So I'm not going to be in there digging it out by hand anyway. Here's a close-up of the other cave. You can see the water running out of there, and of course Sadie's got to splash around and make noise. But look at all the water crests coming out. There's a, that's a spring up there too. That's a very large spring actually. It's one of the bigger springs on the farm. Which is why it's washed that cave out, I'm sure. Pretty much anywhere you find a spring, there is washed out rock over time. 
And sometimes it's a cave, sometimes it's just a very small passageway. But Sadie went back in the cave. I guess she's exploring. She's being a little bit adventuresome for her. She doesn't usually get out too far away from me. Guess you'll find out if there's a bear hibernating in there. Yeah, like I said, the neighbors over the hill just behind us have three different bear on their game cameras, but I have never seen a bear here yet. Not exactly looking forward to seeing a bear here, but you never know. I'm sure they are got to be around here somewhere. they got to be close now. Um, <clears throat> last thing I should do is read letters like this, because I'm just terrible at reading, but these were too good to not read, I think, so I'm going to go ahead and read them to you. Um, I get a lot of letters. I mean, lots of them. I couldn't tell you how many, but lots and lots and lots. Um, and most of them are a similar type theme. These were a little bit more so. Um, anyway, this starts off, my name is Dan Zabo, uh, S-Z-A-B-O. My best friend for 40 years passed away Friday, March 15th at 2.30 a.m. right in front of me. I called 911, but he was already gone. His name is Dan Rogers. He was a Vietnam veteran from the U.S. Navy. He had as many as 14 guitars at times. He loved watching your videos when you were working on instruments. He battled numerous cancers, prostate uh, cancer, lung cancer, bladder cancer, as well as kidney failure most of which has been tied to Agent Orange used in Vietnam. He was a true warrior in every sense of the word. He was 80 years old at the time of his passing. One of his passions was playing guitar and singing, and he was very good at it. Myself, I watched a lot of your videos, but I am sure I listened to almost all of them. He would have your videos playing while I was busy doing other things around the house, but I could always hear them. He learned so much from you and your videos that he started buying a lot of tools and supplies that you talked about on your YouTube channel. We did use most of the tools and supplies to make and install a new saddle and a nut <clears throat> on uh, one of his guitars and modify the saddle on, uh, on another, saddle and nut on another. Your videos were his temporary escape from his pain he was in. He, uh, they gave him <clears throat> something else to think about. And uh, after his chemo treatments for lung cancer in 2019, he was no longer able to play his guitars due to uh, neur neuropathy in his hands and fingers from the chemo, but still plucked around a few minutes at a time now and then. Myself, I left my job... Uh, at an aer <coughs> aerospace company in 2019 to become his caregiver. It was the hardest thing I've ever done, but I'd do it all again. Uh, the last year he needed round-the-clock assistance. I didn't get much sleep, but neither did he, and he was in pain on top of it. I guess my reason for this email is to let you know uh, how big a fan or how big of an impact you and your YouTube channel had on him and I'm guessing many others as well. So thank you Dan for that uh, letter and uh, I'm sorry for your loss of uh, your friend Dan Rogers. So they were both named Dan. But uh, you should be commended for getting in there and helping. Caregiving is tough to do. It's really tough to do and I would not be good at that job. I, I've told you before I've always been kind of a loner and uh, being a caregiver is really hard for me. It's really difficult, but I commend anybody that can do it and uh, take my hat off. <clears throat> this next letter, now, this one is from Peter Lobbick. Now, Peter is the one that I was all confused about his emails or his uh, 
notes just a couple days ago. I couldn't understand what he was getting at, and I, I was getting a little aggravated because I thought he was trying to be smart. Honestly, I, I thought he was trying to say something, you know, re- reading between the lines, which I shouldn't have been doing. It just turns out Peter's from Germany, so English is not his first language. <laughs> and so once I understood that, well, I apologized and said, well, I'm sorry, you know, it's, it's all bad on me. I, it was, you know, I just didn't understand what you were getting at. Well, he wrote a letter. Now, again, English is not his first language. So I have a tough time re- reading English that's, you know, absolutely perfect. I can't read it very well. So I'm hoping I can read this for you. And uh, I just, it's just too good to, to not read. It's, it's a good, it's a great letter. He did a great job. And let me just say this right up front. He's way better at English than I would ever be at German. <laughs> I, I don't think I could speak one or two words in German, but he can, he, he does real well with English. So anyway, uh, this is a story. He wrote, it's like a storybook story. And those of you who have been, you know, watching the channel for a long time will get this. this those of you who are brand new might be scratching your head going, well, I don't get it. <laughs> but I think, I think if you've been watching a while, you'll get it. Now, can I read it? Plus, this I should have printed this one out larger. This one's in small print. Um, It says, hello, Jerry. Today, I like to say thank you. Well, yes, I'm your student. This is true, and I learned a lot from YouTube videos. I've seen them all, and I mean all. No debate. Uh, Mainly, your informations prevent me to make mistakes. And so I took your experiences for my success. I combined it in a text for you. Once upon a time, there was a story. Now here's where the story begins. After a long time cruising the desert, the old Rosa Master found himself surrounded by a crazy group of followers, luthiers and musicians and other underprivileged individuums. They were taking with confused mind. They were talking with confused minds. Some of them said, I will need a two-way truss rod. Others preferred hide glue for everything to glue. They stand together like epoxy and try to rule the Rosa Master. They, while they were adjusting the gap between the strings and the twelfth fret, the truss rod sometimes ask for final rules the Lord should tell. So all spoke with weird splitted tongue. It needs a big relief on the neck, someone explained. Plywood is a good alternative. Brother Gibson explained the advantage of plastic bridge, <laughs> and Major Martin agreed. There, there is no better string set than 13th or stronger. The heavier, the better, Master Taylor said. Talking about string gauge, I think there. The, the better humid, uh, you better humidify your guitar with chemicals. <laughs> Why not fish glue? Someone gasped. Now they were all confused. Um, so... Rosa Master went upon the highest mountain in Missouri, and after three nights praying the Lord, he got the response. He received two stones, and the important Ten Commandments of life were given to him. Okay, here are the Ten Commandments. Number one, don't use hide glue. Full stop, no debate. Use tight bond original on all musical instruments. If Stradivarius could have used it, he would have used it. (laughs) Number two, use hardwood on bridges like ebony, rosewood, or paduke, but not plastic. (laughs) He uses a few explicatives in here, so I'm trying to leave those out. That one started with an F. Never, never ever, and I mean never, use oak on an instrument. It's too heavy and just POWs, no, just POWs, 
not sure what that means. No sound at all. There is no ideal pore filler at all. That's number four, by the way. Um, yeah, and, and I agree with that one. <laughs> Number five, use linseed oil to freshen up old instruments. Take on, wipe off soon, th then polish. Don't forget, you cannot compensate the S. You, you, you made at the bridge by adjusting the nut for intonation. Um, so, if, in other words, if you didn't put the bridge and saddle on right, you don't adjust it at the nut is what he's basically saying there, in case you didn't quite catch the way I read that. <clears throat> Never glue additional wood pieces inside your guitar uh, that were not planned in the basic design. <laughs> I like that one. Remember the Firecrackers guitar story if you've heard that one. Um, final lacquer is oil-based. I'm not quite sure what that one means. <laughs> Sometimes I don't quite get my own things. Don't use humidifiers. That was number nine. And number 10 is, don't trust politicians independent of their political party. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. I get that one. <laughs> I, don't, I, I totally agree with that one. And then it goes on. It says, now the Rosenmeister went downhill to give the crowd the glory message. Uh, the crowd where... The crowd, the crowd were talking speechless. Nobody understood. Like Gibson for president and let us vote for a better Rosa master. Than Jerry, the Rosa master, who came from Italy generations before, was upset. He shouted out loud and then he said, I think it's supposed to be shout. He shouted out loud and then he said, how do I know it? I'm not smart, but I have done all my mistakes all by myself, and I've learned it from 40 years. So you may learn the Ten Commandments I gave to you to prevent the S I went through. <laughs> the Lord himself gave me the advice, and now it's Rose's Law. The crowd was convinced. They all learned the rules. Listen to the old man. They know what they are doing now. Only one quiet little voice raised up and whispered, What is the best inlay for a bridge? See the question marks? <laughs> and Jerry answered, Oh my dear, antler. <laughs> I hope uh, you like it a little summarizes your rules. Don't forget I'm uh, <laughs> I don't know what that word is. L-E-G-A-S-T-H-E-N-I-K I am a that and a bloody German. <laughs> I can see the live videos seldom live as it's 3 p.m. in Germany but I'm consumed them all, and I mean all, no debate. Your friend, Peter Lubbock. Well, Peter, thank you very kindly for the for the Ten Commandments there. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I can't read it very well. I'm a terrible reader, but I hope you all at least got something out of that. I thought it was pretty darn good. Um, this last one's from Dana McCurdy. It's a little shorter. Um, thank goodness, because I'm not any good at reading these things says, I know you receive a ton of thank you notes for your fine work, but I have, uh, I just have an email to thank you for showing me the way. And he goes on to say, I've been a plectrum banjo player for the last 40 years. I'm not going to read all of that part about the personal stuff, but then he comes down and he says, the point of my email is to thank you for showing me how to set the intonation of the banjo. We always measured the distance from the nut to the 12th fret, and then use that same dimension from the 12th fret to the bridge. That was always close, but not exact. After watching you set the intonation on a few guitars, it finally dawned on me to try the same with the banjo. My banjo has never sounded so good. 
and I am more interested in working with it again. Now in my now when my hands would just now if my hands would just cooperate. Many, many thanks. Dana McCurdy Ba Maine. B A H Maine. So thank you, Dana, um, for the note. Thanks. Well, thanks to everybody that sends me the notes all the time. I do read them. I just don't usually read them out loud here on the channel, but I thought like those needed to be read. Now, that, especially the one about the banjo there, and you think, well, why did you read that one? Um, it's just kind of standard. But the thing is with banjos, and I've said this before, there is some kind of, I don't know, it's kind of like the head glue thing. It's kind of like a myth. That banjos can't be set up and done the same way as guitars and all the other instruments. That there's some kind of uniqueness to them. That there's some, you can't, you know, set the intonation that way. And you can't do this and you can't do that. I'm telling you right now, black and white, 100%. This is not a 99.9. .9, this is 100%. Banjos are no different than a guitar or anything else when you're setting the intonation and setting the bridge and all that. They're exactly the same. 100% the same. And if you're monkeying around with like these moon bridges and weird stuff and trying to get the right sound out of your, just go back to the basics and do it like I've shown you on, on a guitar and it's exactly the same. And that's what he proved to himself there after 40 years. And it really is that way. Um, anyway, moving back. Let's see, go back through the comments here a little bit. Um, Okay, I think I've found where we left off. There's quite a few more. Uh, Roger Daigle says, Back in the day, sharpshooters used a paper patch bullet. Yeah, um, I, well, almost any muzzleloader gun uses some sort of a patch. Some of them are cloth, some of them are paper, that type of thing. Um, I do know during the Civil War, they had several paper-encased paper bullets. Um I don't, yeah, and most of those were the kind you you pull the bullet off and you pour the powder down out of the paper and then you stuff the bullet down the barrel. Most of those were like that, but again, I don't, I've not seen anything that looks like the thing I found that, you know, I, I kind of know, I don't want to say I'm an expert on the Civil War because I'm not, but I know quite a bit about what they did during the Civil War with their bullets and their guns and stuff and, uh, this one doesn't fit the mold. I just don't know what it is. But I'm 90% sure it's that old. I'm like 90% sure. 10%? I don't know because I don't know what this thing is. But it looks that old. It, it's got the right patina to be that old um, based on all the other old Civil War stuff I found. It looks like it's Civil War to me. But then again, I don't know. Just don't know. D.E. Jerry, I was watching some of the different storm chasers yesterday because they were in Missouri. I was thinking of you and J.R. I hoping you were all safe. Well, it <clears throat> it sounded pretty darn windy last night. I was getting a little concerned. Um, but uh, anyway, it doesn't look like there's any major damage out there. I, I, you know, I went all the way down to the shop to retrieve these letters because I forgot I had printed them out on the printer. The only printer we have right at the moment that's working is down in the shop. So I printed them out down there. And so this morning early, I ran down there and got them. And while I was out, I look around. I didn't see any major damage. So I guess we're okay. But thank you, D. <clears throat> Gel, there's something there bugging me on my tongue. It's still bugging me. Jelva Skidmark's band. How is orange, Osage orange for acoustic guitar bridge material or bridge plates? It's uh, perfect, really. It's it's absolutely good. Um, the uh, you know the only negative is the color. It's it's a weird color. But you know I I made one. I didn't have any material to make a bridge for a a gal that needed a guitar right away. And I made it out of Osage Orange and then just dyed it black. And she's perfectly happy. She's still using it. And uh, it worked out really well. And uh, it sounds really good. It's very hard wood. It, it, it would, it's a perfect choice for the bridge or the bridge plate. Now to Hildebrandt, Jerry, is your main crop rocks? 
Yeah, if I could get one penny for every rock we have here on this farm, just on this farm, oh, I'd be so rich it wouldn't even be funny. Just one penny per rock. Man, there's a lot of rock here. <laughs> like I said, you, I'm not s saying this for dramatic effect. I'm telling you it's a fact. You, c you couldn't take a pocket knife and go out anywhere, anywhere around here and stick it in the ground without hitting a rock. You, can, you can't do it. It's, there's just gravel and rock everywhere. Um, Charles Salkowitz says, thumbs up. Please do. Um, okay. Daigley. Daigley is the way he pronounced his uh, Roger's name. I guess I said Daigle, prob probably. But anyway, Daigley is the correct pronunciation. Chip Wood, what is the name of the wood dealer in Fulton, and do you know if they do mail order? Well, I don't know about the mail order so much. I kind of think they will, <clears throat> but I'm not sure about that. Um, it's called Old Standard Wood. Uh, can I remember his name? I don't know. Let me just see if I've got it here in my contacts real quick. Don't know if I can find it. <laughs> okay. Nothing's ever simple whenever you're in a hurry, you know. Uh, it's just not cooperating. Just scroll through. I'll get there quicker that way than trying to... Oh, wouldn't you know it's not there. I know it's in my contacts, but it's not on this phone because, you know, this is a different phone, but it should be there. Uh, let me just try a search. Let me try that. Here it is. John Griffin is the fellow's name that runs it. Um, old standard wood and his phone number that I have, and I'll just go ahead and give it because I figured it's just business for him. 573-642-8900. 573-642-8900. Old standard wood. And of course, if you go there, tell him Jerry Rosa sent you. <clears throat> He, uh, he, he travels, well, I think he's even traveled to Europe, and, and he'll buy like one log and ship it back and then cut that log up at his place there and then takes real good care of it. Uh, what he has is all, always high quality. You know, it's curly maple. Curly maple and spruce is what he does mostly. He does have a lot of Adirondack spruce, and uh, then I think he's got... Um, the other, the other large spruce that grows. I forget the name of it now. I know the name. I can't think of it. Anyway, he, he has he mostly deals in spruce and maple. But he, I think he has some sycamore, and I think he got into some other, some other woods too, but I don't know how much he's into the other stuff. And whether he does the mail order or not, I'm not sure. Dottie Hildebrand, Jerry, I have tried to give money to, on Grandpa's old fiddle so I can just send money for, for the veterans. Um, yeah, and I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to talk about that again. Um, I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do today because the weather's kind of ugly out here. And uh, I'm going to go down there today and try to do something for the veterans. I'm, I may put some kind of a care package together, I, either strings or if I can get that guitar, and I think it's like a breed love. It's a very nice guitar, but I doubt it's repairable. I can't remember what's wrong with it. I haven't looked at it in a couple of years. It's in a case, but if it's something I can fix some way, even if it's just a band aid, I'm going to try to fix that up and give them that also. And it would be a very valuable guitar if it was new. It's probably a five or six thousand dollar guitar. Um, but anyway, um. Ronald Todd, uh, let's see. 
But anyway, if, if anybody wants to contribute to this, and apparently it, the way I suggested doing it doesn't seem to work, um, we could do it a couple of different ways. One is you can just send uh, money th through PayPal to my email address, rosastringworks at gmail.com. You can, you can make any kind of donation you want through PayPal to that email address, and it should work and should get deposited in, into my business account. If I get anything coming through like that, and, it, and if you can put a note on it, just put veterans or six string heroes is the name of this program, um, and I'll make sure the money gets to them, and I'll write them one large check for the, for the total. <clears throat> and I'll make a donation myself on top of it. So anyway, um, you know, it is a good cause, Six String Heroes. It's about helping them with music. And of course, there are people that have traumatic brain injuries, uh, PTSD, uh, you know, amputations, physical injuries, all kinds of things. So it's a good cause. And I know my good, I know my friend Gary Mertz that's sent me this. Uh, I know him personally. He's a good guy. So I know it's all, you know, on the level. And if you want to take part in that, I'd appreciate it. And uh, we'll try to get together a good care package and get it to them fairly soon here. Uh, and uh, and if, if you're still having trouble with that, like you can't get that to work, well, then if you, if you uh, send me a, just an email uh, in the next day or so, I will then... Um, uh, send you an invoice if you want. Tell me how much you'd like to contribute and I'll send you an invoice for that amount. And then you can just pay the invoice with a credit card or whatever. So we can do it a, a couple of different ways. But that, those are the fastest ways. The, the only negative of, of doing it through PayPal is they take 3% or something. You know, so this is just the price you pay for doing anything these days. There's always somebody got their hand in it, you know. But it's nice that the service is available, so, I mean, I guess we should pay, you know. I'm not really complaining, I'm just complaining. <laughs> uh, so thanks, Daddy, for reminding me there. <clears throat> Ronald Todd, Jerry, is it, it's too bad you can't find a vein of coal on the property, maybe easier than wood. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Uh, like I said, I, I've told the story already, but the old man that grabbed my arm when I was doing my very first uh, bluegrass festival here on the farm, back around 2001, somewhere in there, he grabs my arm and he says, son, what are you going to do about your silver mine? Uh, silver mine? What are you talking about? I thought he was senile. <laughs> I really did. He was really old. I would guess he was every bit in his 90s. He says, well... You mean you bought this place and you didn't know there was a silver mine on it? I said, well, I guess I did. <laughs> he says, well, they hired me to break their horses back when I was 16. And he says, uh, uh, you know, he says there was a mining company hauling silver ore out of here. I, said, I ain't seen no sign of that, you know. Well, just recently, I was back in the back past our little swamp. We have a swamp back there where there's another spring. And I didn't ever really notice it before, but there is kind of a, almost like a pit there. I didn't really notice it. The bank is chopped off, and it's chopped off in a large semicircle area. And um, it's all overgrown now, you know, so it's, it's something you just don't notice really. And, but then I, what I did was I found some big heavy iron down in the ground, and it doesn't look like farming iron. It looks more like maybe mining type iron and so that could be where they had the silver mine back there anyway i do have mineral rights on this property on everything except 40 acres what do you want to bet that the 40 acres is back there in that corner <laughs> uh anyway yeah, Cole would be cool. Uh, Bill Webb, I picked up a guitar at the pawn shop recently and the bridge was lifting bad. I could see that someone had used hot glue to try and put the bridge back on. It didn't hold. Tight bond to the rescue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hot glue. Let's add, let's add commandment number 11. Never. And I repeat, never use hot glue on an instrument. Period. <laughs> yeah.
yeah, hot glue is just, it has no place on an instrument at all. <laughs> okay, and uh, it scrolled up on me. I'm sorry. So I'm looking for it here. Um, okay, moving on. Bill Webb, I got the bridge off and cleaned up all the hot glue residue and reset the bridge. It's up and playing now. Always good feeling to rescue a guitar and get it back into playing condition. Yep. Ronald Todd, I'm 24 hour a day caregiver and I thank you for getting my days off on the right foot. Well, you're welcome, Ronald, and uh, I'll pray for you, man. I, it's, caregiving is a tough thing. I, I am not cut out for that. That is not who I am. I'm sorry I just say it, but it's, you know, you, I, like I tell you, I don't lie about stuff. Uh, it's just, it's just not who I am. I, Wish I could be that way. I truly do, but I just can't be that way. It just doesn't work for me. I mean, I'm not going to abandon somebody. That's not the point, but it's just that I'm not good at giving care. That's all there is to it. Peter Lubbock. I guess he heard me read his letter. <laughs> Peter, I apologize. I'm sorry. I'm just terrible at reading. Uh, he says, "Love, I love for that. Uh, he says, Leg... Legasthenic, legasthenic equals someone that cannot read or write correctly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's me. Uh, D.E. I am caregiver to my dad. He, he can be very unkind towards me. Yeah, that's the sad thing. And, you know, they're in so much pain and... Th 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 you know, it's hard for them to relate uh, to to what you're doing for them. It, it, it's just difficult. I am home crying, but I would uh, wouldn't be here without you. Well, well, thank you, D. E. I hope everything works out for you. I pray for you. It's terrible. It's just terrible. Caregiving is tough. It's tough. Sue's really good at it. She's really good at it. She Sue, when we were just teenagers, she worked at a, um, uh, I don't know how to, uh, the old words would have been a handicapped place. She worked where all these children were, you know, some of them had Down syndrome, some of them had physical handicaps and all kinds of things. I don't know what the place was called. I can't remember it, but she worked there and she loved it. She just loved doing that. Wow, I, that's a special person that can do that. I can't do that at all. Bill Webb. Uh, the muskets were smooth bore, so were easier to, to ram the projectiles down a dirty barrel. Yeah, some of them were smooth bore, but some of them did have rifle, riflings. Um, a lot of your muzzle loaders do have riflings, and you could still ram it down. It spins as it goes down. Um, you can feel it spin. Uh, I've had several muzzle loaders myself, and most of them were smooth bore. But by the time of the Civil War, they did have some with riflings also. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, round balls were often shot, uh, well, they were shot out of both. They were shot out of ones with riflings and ones with smooth bores. But in anyway... D.E., I think the storm chasers are planning on going out again today. I'm not sure where, though. Let's see. Boy, this, we're getting lots of comments here. I'm trying to get caught up. Bill Webb, yes, D. my mom was not very nice the last eight years I was trying to take care of her. I had to forgive her and just move past it. Yeah, it's tough. That's tough. It really is. Um, Blackjack Guitar says, did you fix your phone? Not yet. I'm waiting on parts. I think the parts will be here either today or tomorrow. Um, C90 guy, please pray for Hobo Shoestring, a popular YouTuber who ha who has gone missing. Wow. Wow. Uh, Engelman Spruce, well, that's one kind, but that's not the one I was thinking of. Sitka. Sitka is what I was thinking of. He has a lot of Sitka spruce because that comes, I think, from Canada or maybe northern United States too, but I think he gets a lot of it from Canada. Simon Jardine, have you ever repaired a gold top finish 
I'm trying to repair two small but deep chips on an electric guitar. It is not easy trying to find color match, trust me. Uh, Simon, I wouldn't be very good at helping you with that, unfortunately. Um, yeah, the, the color match thing was never my strong suit because I'm colorblind. But I did pretty good for a colorblind guy, you know. Just imagine what I could have done if I could have seen the colors. <laughs> uh, let's move on down here, looking for question marks. I was able to get the guitar for forty dollars. Well, okay, yep, and hopefully you can make some money on it and sell it. Ronald Todd. I, D says, she's re talking to D says, I understand completely. I'm taking care of my wife. Yeah, I just, I pray I don't have to be in that position. I'm just not good at it. I'm just not good at it. Bill Rhodes, could that place to, Bill Rhodes, could that place to have been Emmanuel's? Eman I don't know. Don't know what that means. Uh, okay, that's pretty much it, guys. I think I'm going to call it there. Thank you all for being here today. We've got 160 viewers at the moment. We will see you tomorrow with something else. Yeah.